Hey, Revelation Bible Study friends. Uh, thank you so much for your prayers and support as I was sick yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, I had a tick bite that developed uh, a rash. And, uh, and as you know, that can sometimes lead to Lyme's disease. So I went to urgent care and I received some treatment and I'm already feeling better. So thank you so much for your prayers um, and thank you for your patience. Uh, because, you know, even in the, in the fact that we couldn't meet yesterday. Uh, but I just wanted to talk just a little bit about Revelation chapter 14 uh, before we meet next week, just to give a couple thoughts and a couple things um, as you're studying and, uh, and looking at this scripture passage. So in chapter 14, we're told um, right in the beginning, I looked and behold a lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. We remember that this goes back to chapter 7, right? At chapter 7, we're first introduced to the 144,000. And that's where the other angel, who we said was Jesus, sealed the foreheads of the 144,000. Of course, this seal contrasts with the mark of the beast. We see the mark of the beast at the end of chapter 13, 666. So those who are wicked are marked with a a mark, this numbers, but those who are uh, faithful, righteous, are sealed um, with the name of the Father on their forehead. And we remember that back uh, in the Old Testament, the high priest who would go into the temple once a year for the Day of Atonement, what did he have on his forehead? He had a plate that said, Holy to the Lord. And Lord was the official name for the Father, um, Holy to the Lord. And so now, not just the high priest, but all believers in Jesus Christ have the Lord's name on their forehead. And so they're sealed. Of course, this is also a picture of baptism. When we baptize, you know, when we baptized Carter just, uh, when I baptized Carter just a couple months ago, you are, you know, in baptism, you're, you're immersed in the waters, um, and then you are sealed with the grace of God in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's done on the forehead. The mark of the cross is made on the forehead. So these uh, believers, 144,000, are marked, uh, sealed with the name of the Father. They're sealed with the Holy Spirit, just like in baptism. And then we're told uh, that we heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters and the voice of loud thunder. Now, earlier, we remember that we heard this imagery before, that the voice of many waters is, uh, is the voice of God the Father or maybe of Christ. And the voice of loud thunder is the voice of the cherubim, the four living creatures, right, at the throne. Um, and then this sound of harpists playing their harps, and they sang a new song. Um, we don't know this for sure, but the harps might be with the 144,000. They might have the harps, uh, but it might also be the case that the harps belong to the 24 angels um, from chapter 5 who get their harps. Uh, from chapter 5, verse 8, we're told that the 24 elders, uh, angels, get their harps. But anyway, we remember there's a pattern from saying praise without instruments to singing praise with instruments. Remember in chapter 4 of Revelation, they're saying praise with no instruments. And then in chapter 5, when Jesus comes in his uh, death, resurrection, and ascension, what happens? Now they're singing praise and they have instruments. Well, in chapter 7, uh, with the 144,000, we have the 144,000 saying praise and now in chapter 14, they are singing a new song. So we have the same transition. And where are the 144,000? They are with the Lamb on Mount Zion. Mount Zion is Jerusalem. Mount Zion is where the temple is. But spiritually, we also know that Mount Zion is God's dwelling place with us. It's the new Jerusalem. It's the church where we worship God and receive him in word and in holy communion. And so the 144,000, the saints are with Jesus Christ around his throne on Mount Zion on the earth. And so those are just a couple thoughts uh, that I wanted to share uh, with you. 
um, and we're told that that these um, are ones who were redeemed from the earth. No one could learn the song except for uh, the 144,000 who are sealed. Because what are we doing in worship? We're singing songs, not that we've made up, but we're singing songs that are actually songs from heaven. They actually have to do with what the angels and the saints are singing before God's throne. Those faithful who have died in the Lord, they're singing God's praise with the, with the angels um, and archangels right now. And when we worship God on Sundays, we are joining and participating in that song. But we can only learn that song. We can only join in that heavenly worship pattern if Jesus himself teaches us these songs by the Holy Spirit. And so that's what we see here in verse uh, 3. Uh, and they follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They are ones who are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Now, that doesn't mean that they are literally virgins. What it means is that they're not committing idolatry. Because in the Bible, idolatry and, and, uh, or idolatry and adultery always go together. Sexual immorality and adultery always go together. Later, we're going to be told about the beast and the whore. And so, of course, these faithful are the ones who are not worshiping the beast. They're not worshiping um, idols. They're worshiping God. And after that, we're going to see in later chapter 14, um, we'll see a bunch of angels. There's uh, three angels that show up and they tell us things. And then the Father speaks in verse 13. Uh, the Holy Spirit speaks at the end of verse 13. And then Jesus himself speaks in verse 14. And then we're told that there's three more angels. So you got three angels, then you got Father, Spirit, Son, and then you got three more angels uh, that finish out the chapter. And we will come to that when we get together uh, just here uh, this following uh, Monday. So I hope that that's a blessing that as we uh, feast on this scripture, um, that we're nourished in our soul, um, and that we, as we pray over the scripture and as we uh, learn and wrestle with it, that we might grow um, in God as a result, that we might love God more and love others more as a result. So I hope this has been a blessing and we will uh, continue in our study this coming Monday. Have a blessed week.